If you want to increase the reliability of your BMW, look no further than that small plastic coolant adapter in the front of your engine. Pairing it with your next coolant change is the most convenient option. But if you're over 100,000 miles, it's essential that you do it now before it leaves you stranded. Let's get into it. What's up everybody, my name is Fritz and welcome to the channel. In last week's video, we addressed what is arguably the number one issue associated with the N20 F30s. But in today's video, we're going to be changing out the part that makes the charge pipe that arguably first part. If you guessed the plastic coolant flange, as well as its hose, you're correct. The reason why this part is arguably the number one part to change out as well as the charge pipe is that both of these could be surpassed by the plastic timing chain guide. But that is a pretty intensive job that I would probably take to a shop. So as far as DIY projects, I would say that the coolant flange as well as the charge pipe are the two that you'll want to do right away. Now I have no idea why BMW keeps putting plastic components in critical parts of the engine bay. But the part that we're going to be replacing that flange with is all metal. We're even going to be upgrading the line that we mentioned earlier and changing out our plastic bleeder screw for a brass one, giving you more reliability on the roadway, not worrying that anything's going to break on you and leave coolant spilled all over the engine bay. And this job isn't too terribly difficult. We do definitely have enough working space inside this engine bay and it should take you about an hour and a half to two hours. Just make sure that you have a big enough catch to catch all the coolant and you should be well on your way. So let's get right into it. Once the hood is secured in the up position, we can remove the under panel, which is secured by several eight millimeter screws. This will allow us to unsecure the coolant line and move it out of the way. I decided to drain the coolant from this hose because I thought it would be easier to manage. All we need to do is remove the retaining clip and place in a funnel to direct the coolant to our catch before wiggling the coolant hose loose and prying it off. Even though it seemed to work at first, it didn't go exactly as planned. Fortunately, we got most of it though. Hopefully yours goes better. And while it drains, we can make our 50-50 mix using BMW blue coolant and distilled water. I also prefer to use the BMW bottle for storage since it's properly labeled and made of a more durable plastic. By now the coolant should be done draining and we can reinsert our hose that should snap in. Then lock it into place with the retaining clip. Secure in the bottom coolant line before placing back on the under panel and lowering the car. This will give us the flat working space to complete the rest of the job. Let's change out the hose and adapter. First, we'll need to disconnect the sensor on our intake before removing the intake box. giving us full access to the T30s holding in that plastic flange. Let's also remove the bottom section that's held in by a pinch style hose clamp. Finally, we can remove the flange which might require some help from a small pry bar. Also, don't be surprised if it doesn't come out in one piece. If that's the case, just use a pick tool to pull out the rest and ensure the area is clean. Afterwards, bring in your flange, lubricate it with some coolant before placing it in, 
then securing the T30s. If you like, you can reuse the old pinch clamp, but I prefer to use a screw style clamp. Based off the other bolts in the area, we'll torque to 14 newton meters, but the O-ring does most of the work as far as holding things into place. Time to bring back in the airbox by securing it by its grommets, reattaching the lines and sensor, and finally the hose clamp. To bleed the system, you don't need to loosen the bleeder screw, but this will allow you to better hear the sound when the system is working. Start by filling the reservoir to max and give it time for the coolant to work its way through the system. Once the coolant is at its max level, put the car in accessory mode. Turn the heat on all the way at the lowest fan setting. You don't necessarily need the AC on, I just forgot that I had it on in this case and then fully depress the gas pedal until you hear this sound. This process could last up to 15 minutes and will go quiet when it's done. Afterwards, top off your coolant and check for leaks. Also, don't forget your brass bleeder screw. And just like that, we've increased the reliability of your N20 BMW. Combining today's information with last week's video, where we replace out all of these critical plastic components for all metal variants, and you have an engine that's gonna last you for a long time. One thing that I would like to ask is for those of you who are more experienced than I am, or if you tackle this job, with less spillage for the coolant. If you could please recommend your tactics as well as your techniques down in the comment section. I know that we could have used a bigger catch, but I hate recommending tools to people that they're only gonna use once or once every so often, and it takes up so much space in their garage. So if you could, please share your information in the comment section, as well as any other questions that you might have. If you need any of the resources, it's gonna be down in the description links, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and I'll see all of you in the next one.